So they give a very good example. They say that an Indian is standing on the beach and he looks into the ocean and Columbus ships start arriving, but he doesn't see the ships. Why can't he see them? Because he doesn't have in his mind the same model as a big house that floats on the sea. The truth is that they're wrong because the ship doesn't exist either. It only exists in the imagination of whoever imagines. This world doesn't exist. But what do I want to say? What about this example is good? If you don't have the vessels, you don't recognize anything on the outside. How do I build a vessel inside of me if I don't know what something is on the outside of me? I need somebody to tell me about it. There's no other way. That's why the Kabbalistic sages write books for you, for us. And according to these books, you start imagining what's out there. And from this imagination, slowly you build patterns and some kinds of shapes in your mind. For sure, they're not correct, but slowly, by longing, by desire, you invite a light that is building shapes more and more close to what it is. And then you start reaching that point where you can actually see. The light is built within the vessel. Imagine that a caveman just appeared right now into this world like you see sometimes in the movies. So he's in this world and he's walking around and he's seeing everything that's happening. But he wouldn't be able to see anything, nothing. So can this Indian pass through this wall? Yes, he can. He has no sense of it, and it's not there for him. For him, there's no material and not a shape dressed in the material. Simple as that. If we get away from the way we usually see, we'll come to the true point that the Kabbalists are telling us that seems so strange to us. And those scientists who study quantum physics, why do they come to this realization? At that deepest sub-nuclear level of our reality, you and I are literally one, one, one. Because they enter a world that has strange rules. Suddenly, one thing can be in two places. Or time and space and movement can be in another shape. And they come to this same thought. Everything depends on the one who perceives it. And that's why whether you pass through the wall or you don't exists only towards me, but it doesn't exist on its own. And what does towards me mean? It means, according to my vessels, it will be yes or no. Only in this world we're born with five vessels, and we develop from one generation to the next. So a child is born and immediately begins to develop in such a way that he's in an environment and in a world that grows along with him. He's the one who captures the world and it becomes a fact to him. All the rest, the shapes, everything is immaterial. And he's the one who gives it meaning through his five senses. All these five senses are the way that we get things and we produce these things according to what they manufacture. Can we reach the wisdom of Kabbalah through quantum physics? No. 
Otherwise, Abraham would have dealt with quantum physics first. They're talking about love and it's all one world because they're feeling a movement towards this form. But how do you implement this? Quantum physics can't answer this because this is the upper force. If we, the ones who really feel from within the heart, the point in the heart, the desire to go back to spirituality and feel it, we begin to learn about our situation up here. And that's the wisdom of Kabbalah. So we learn about us being here when in fact we are already in that state, but we don't feel it. But by wanting in our blocked states to awaken and feel the true state, if we learn about our true situation, we draw on ourselves. It's as if we draw the light that's present there. Because I'm in that world, in that state, I just don't, I'm not aware of it. But if I make every effort to become conscious of it, to be awakened, my desire, my impulse to do it opens up my additional vessels and then we begin to feel spirituality. What does that mean? We begin to feel how we are all interconnected as one body and then through each and every one infinite light follows endlessly and without any limitations and all the problems that we feel today in the world is only so as to force humanity to begin to go back up. You know, I had been studying physics and I knew something about that technology, but Kabbalah as a science was something that never would have even dawned on me. I don't care what you're doing, there is something about this field of way of thinking, of seeing, which can improve anything. And I don't care if you're a Jew, a Muslim, Gentile, Arab, I don't care what you are, I don't care what nationality, I don't care what religion you belong to. Kabbalah will help liberate your mind from any shackles of thought that keep you ensconced or enclosed into a certain way of thinking. Now, if these words are awakening you right now, you know it. If they're not awakening you right now, then I'm suggesting to you that you've fallen asleep. Indeed, Kabbalah it does have a, an awful lot to say. I don't hear anything, I don't see anything, but I feel. There are these three-dimensional pictures like wallpapers. If you look at them and you defocus your eye, then you go into the picture and you find a three-dimensional picture. Random. When you look at it at the beginning, it looks like just a jagged random pattern. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then after a while, you see a, a right. kind of flat mm -hmm. yeah. 3D image emerge. Mm -hmm. So these things. <laughs> So, what the wisdom of Kabbalah actually does is it helps you get that picture. It doesn't do anything new, actually. It just focuses and aims your attributes and everything in you in such a way that you begin to see into matter.